talking in our, in our tables. And let's talk as a bigger group. Because I heard some very interesting things as I was going around the room. And I, I had the luxury of eavesdropping on all these wonderful conversations. So um, you don't necessarily have to report out in a sort of, well, we talk about this, this, and this. But let's just talk about some of the interesting things that came up. Anybody want to volunteer? about hours. Hours? Assessing the hours. That's something to bite off, right? How are you going to do that? <laughs> That's okay. You don't have to have an answer right now. What I hope is that you go home with a, a thing like, okay, hours. I can start with hours. What about other people? We yeah. talk about accreditation as an incredible opportunity to do a lot of formal assessment. So the accreditation um, pushes that are happening at the larger institution yeah. level can be the impetus. Well, they happen at, at this level. Too. No, what I mean is, the as in, even if you're a small library, you're embedded oh. in a bigger institution, and that one has to be accredited. So, yeah, so that can be an impetus for something, right? Yeah. Is that what you were thinking? Well, you have to do that self-study. I mean, that's part of the process. So it's a way to kind of do a little bit of naval gaze in a structured way. Even if a brief way, as Mary was saying. Yeah. Like, you know, they give you five minutes. What else have we got talking about here? Website evaluation assessment. Website. Scott, how are we assessing our website? Uh, web analytics, usability tests, user surveys, user focus groups, and our own observations of the website through uh, frontline experiences coming from our liaisons, our reference team, and our access services group. I am so impressed that you have that answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you just give a workshop on it? Yeah. Yeah. Plus, plus what I did. Okay, I'm not as impressed with them as I Sorry, how did you? Would you say it's easy, though, to do that? Uh, well, you, we've, we've added it in sort of like a, like a modular, um, uh, like a modular program. So we installed web analytics, then we installed a few more web analytics tools, then we installed uh, sort of a user survey program, and then we synthesize it all together. So, so you which, started, it builds on it right, itself. You, yeah. So you build on it. So I think that's something to take away from that, is that you, you can think about this mod in a modular way. I think most of us, procrastinate on doing things when we, we think about the entire thing as one huge thing to do. I know that's the story of my life. That's why I used to write my papers at midnight before they were due. The worst case scenario here. Whereas if I had learned earlier in my life that I could do things in increments, I would be a happier, healthier person today. What else were you talking about at your tables? Yeah. Understanding what analyzing is or you know what assessment, what assessment is, assessment uh -huh. is yeah. yeah uh the word assessment is not something we use all the time um and what what did we decide over here um it's understanding outcomes so you probably understand what you're doing and then understanding what happened after you did it and so that i think Sometimes that's where things fall apart. It's you just do it. You don't you don't assess how it, it affected your you know patrons, the students, the faculty who are part of the right. That other person in the room. How did that affect them? And it's different from evaluating your performance as a teacher, which always sort of gets people on edge, anyway. And I think about assessment more focused on did this actually work for the student? Did they retain, did anything stick? Do they actually know what's in the catalog if I spent half an hour talking about what was in the catalog and they left not actually knowing that? And that does happen. <laughs> Even though they might be nodding and saying. So how would you find out if it's stuck? Yeah. I, I actually get them to, to demonstrate that they know how to take those clicks by themselves before they leave. Because it's really easy when we do it, but it's not so easy when they have to go and exactly. do it when they've gone home and you know maybe they've had to make dinner for the kids and right. everything else. Right? So I get them to kind of demonstrate it, or or if we don't have if I don't have enough time and it's I have a lot of students, then I, I get them to actually write it down what the next book is. Yeah, 
You get them to sign what? To write it down. Okay. I make sure that they've written it down. <coughs> so that it has a better chance of sticking with them. Yeah, at least even the first step. Jenny, did you want to say something? I didn't mention this here. Has anybody done anything of um, surveying former students, students that have gone on to four-year colleges, or students that have gone to careers, and what their what they think of the library did for them? We have an exit interview, don't we, Marianne, for all students, an exit interview for oh. seniors? Um, but we don't have, the library doesn't do it. It's a larger university thing, and so it's by, just by chance that they happen to mention the library play a role. But I don't know if it's an interview, I think they're sent to senior a survey. survey. Some programs have uh, yeah. exit interviews like student athletics does, you know, and some disciplines. I, I, one, of, one of our goals, I think, is to help kids feel comfortable going into a library so they can go into any library mm -hmm. and not feel intimidated or not be worried about asking questions or knowing what they can get. And I'd like to see, I'd like to know if that, if we do that. So how do you think you could do a survey? Our, our college can't even keep track of them once they graduate and work right on the reservation, so I don't know how they're going to keep track of them. So this is what we call one of those obstacles. They're trying to do better at that, but I mean, it's seriously, and I'm sure MSU has the same issues. People graduate from here and they go away and you don't even have an address to contact them. Do you have an alumni association? No. I don't think yeah. we're developing one, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. We've been trying to get one. Just going. making some assumptions based on a bigger and bigger institution. The majority of the people that have graduated from college on the Fort Peck Reservation are alumni. <laughs> 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 motives, but just like how satisfied are you at the library, the service, your employees, you know, help you and things like that. And I got pretty much what I expected, but then I said I'd draw one and give it to the object card so that kind of gave people a incentive, although they so, did it really fast. Right, so you gave an incentive. And was it a hand-filled out survey? Right. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of, um, we were, so at one table we were talking about sort of survey sickness. Um, where people get tired of surveys, whether yeah. they're in print or... And I'm not saying they're a bad thing to do. We certainly use them. I think we just had a survey sent out to us about what kind of hand dryer we want in the bathroom. <laughs> I have to say I laughed for about five minutes in my office. <laughs> it came from our great associate dean, and, and bless his heart. I mean, people want to know what you think and what you want. But about everything, you know. So we have to be kind of careful how we use surveys, too. You know, another... Another thing yeah. that I can, we we did a, we had a suggestion box and all we ever got was you guys are doing a great job keep yeah. it up oh. and we haven't had any complaints from students which makes me think that they're not expecting enough of us <laughs> and so I'm low expectation yeah I don't know our students know that I mean not just our students our patron base knows that everything on the res is grant driven. So they come in and expect to have to sign in somewhere. So they're not going to tell us we're doing a bad job. That's exactly what I thought it was interesting. <laughs> well, we can have a, a confidential box with a slot that you could like a voting okay. box. So would it help you? Yeah. All we got was you guys are yeah. doing a great job. <laughs> hmm. How do you get somebody to tell you're doing, you're doing a bad job? How do you get somebody to, tell, to be critical? That's really interesting. Yeah. Anonymously. Yeah. Yeah. But even anonymously, yeah. she's yeah. 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 I do. I try. And I forgot this spring. I do a paper. I've done the same paper survey for about 10 years. It needs to be revamped. But there are a couple people who are meanly honest as far as I'm concerned. And when I see those comments, it's like, you do that? Because, you know, and maybe they're just being mean. Maybe they didn't really have anything happen and they're just wanting to be contrary. But, uh, yeah, it hurts when somebody says something. You're, yeah. It's better when they say you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. when you, but you don't know what to improve if nobody's telling you you're doing anything wrong. Yes, that's right. Um, Abby, you were talking about statistics. And 
I, I have every statistic anybody could ever ask for, but nobody asks for them. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I have Excel spreadsheets like you would believe. I was quizzing for Gary on this earlier this year. Don't you use them when you have to do an iPads report? Yeah, yeah. But that, it, it, I have the numbers for that, yeah. but I have lots more numbers. Yeah. I mean, I have hourly counts and gate counts and surf, and, and, and I mean just everything, and they're useful numbers to me. But how do I get the rest of the world to see this shows that we need more funding? This shows that we are trying to do our job. This shows that students are coming to the library. What graph or chart or pie chart or whatever would say to somebody else on the outside world? They either need help or they're doing a great job. Or well, what happens when you all together start comparing your statistics, comparing your hours, comparing your <laughs> student headcount, comparing numbers? Of I mean, I all of us? Yeah, I'll try to yeah. float all your votes well, and higher. That would be nice because the Montana State Library does that for all public libraries. So when you go to the fall workshops, they hand everyone this cute little trifold flyer, and tribal colleges don't get that. So we, you would kind of look, oh, what does your library do? Uh -huh. Well, and there is absolutely no reason why we couldn't use the, the the form that the state library uses and answer all those same questions like the you know for the seven of us in montana we could do it or we could do it for all 30 however many of us there are all over the united states i'm sure that getting a quote of the survey that form that they use is probably not a big deal but so that there's some really different i mean i have 400 students eva has 120. i have 20 faculty eva has yeah, see, so so it, it works, but it doesn't work because, and the collection sizes are so different. But that's why you do proof ratios and yeah. percentages. Yeah. yeah. So that, you know, you could still make that work, I think. Yeah. But um, pulling that, one of the things, though, that I'm reading in the assessment literature is that we are really good at counting things in libraries. <laughs> and we've proven that. ABBA certainly has proven that. <laughs> instead of maybe even some of that counting. Yeah. What would actually be more interesting to our administrators? The, 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 personal the outcomes, comments, possibly. The personal comments. The right. comments from patrons, both positive and negative. And also, how did you impact the lives of your students, either through those comments, <coughs> or can you show that grades went up with some of them? Because the class came to the you know, so think you, guys, you guys do that. Are you guys able to get to that level to to either work with faculty to say yes, the library is the one that helped raise these grades, or or not? Or you know, we have in the past surveyed our faculty with, that we talked for, and with precisely that kind of question: Do you feel that the library instruction helped your students obtain better, you know, write better papers, and that sort of thing? And um, we haven't gone to the point of and if you say yes, prove it to us. <laughs> but really, the places that are experimenting with this are doing interesting things like counting citations, doing citation analysis. So maybe you've got some teachers who you can work with closely. Not every teacher, because you can die from the workload. But maybe you've got a couple who will let you examine the bibliographies on the papers so you can see how many of them are actually using peer-reviewed journals after you taught them what that means and how to find those. And then you tell a story out of that. You use those stats to tell a more sort of an outcomes focused um, story. So that, that's one idea. I mean, I think there are lots of ways. We, we just have to almost like have somebody sort of hit us on the head with a mallet and so we quit counting things. <laughs> <laughs> or we count things and we put that aside and we think in a slightly different way. Yeah. One of the things that I did is our And I hope you all heard that. I think that is a really important question, and it's going to come up in the next few slides here. I think it's so important. It's like you read my mind. How do you see, how do you recognize success? How are you going to talk about success? How are you going to identify it? How are you going to describe it to somebody else? If it's just, we count success as 20 people a day walking into the library. 
Well, that's okay, but it's really, it's not a very exciting success story, is it? Because it doesn't take the next step. It doesn't say, and these people were able to do X, Y, and Z, or, you know, whatever we want to do with that. Anything else you want to bring out from the discussions? Yeah, Mary? Well, just from our group discussion here, I would love to see some kind of an annual report of all the tribal college libraries, some kind of stats, something. Because I come from the public library background where we had to turn those in annually, and we got to see how we compared to all the other libraries in our state. I don't know how I compared to any of the other tribal college libraries. Why don't you let me see if I can talk to the state library in Montana, since I kind of have a connection there. And if I can get their their form, their 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 Excel sheets, whatever they bought, and see if we can't get something going starting for fall semester, maybe. Would that work for everybody? Yeah. It, it sounds like something that could probably get APAC to be behind as far as getting all of the libraries. And I was thinking about it before you said that, but I'm also wondering, and so you have it. Yeah. And what are you going to do yeah. with it? Mm -hmm. You can get a lot of statistics. Clearly, Eva has all the statistics. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got to so You're going to have to say, MSU says, you know, Dean or whoever, University of Montana spends this much per capita on the library and you're behind. Now, if you, if you can use it for that type of a thing, then that would be a thing. But other than that, but it's still a lot of counting too, and and I'm not saying you know let's not start let's not count any of the stuff and let's not compile these stats because it would give you a, a feeling for how you compared with others who are doing a similar job. Well, maybe you pull in things like graduation rates, retention rates, yeah. library support, uh, the amount of library instruction uh, being done, the amount of reference transactions. It sounds to me like you need AHEC to start doing this kind of well, thing. Well, I think you know, AHEC does this on a level, but not touching the library. I mean, they get statistics every year, mm -hmm. if not more often, on graduation <laughs> rates and numbers, the FTEs and all those things. But to add in the library component, they can be great. You can try to say something. Well, I don't. I don't. We have I mean, I think a lot of us fill out the ACRL report every year, and there's a NCES report. I don't know if anybody does it. I don't know where to get the statistics. Those two. Those two are, I thought, I think we're supposed to all fill those two. Yeah, but mm -hmm. we are, data, but we're filling all that data. Can we get it? You know, no, they, they pull it all together, and you can't pick your own. I don't, I don't quite understand. Well, you can't. One okay. of those reports. You can't. You can pay. Just you can pay to get access to it. Pay? Yeah, you have to pay. I, I paid once. It's $150 a year. And I ran the tribal libraries, but not everybody reports. It's a pretty small. I mean, it's not everybody. So, it's not everybody. Yeah. Yeah. so what you want is AHEC to start doing huh? this and give it back to you for free. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay, so somebody write that down. <laughs> yeah, Gary's going to write that down and then you, know, you can bring them. Um, I want to go on to the last bit here, which I don't know, I hope we'll put a little bit more perspective on this. Um, this is. Um, what I like about this quote is that it talks about a journey. Assessment is a journey. And I would say it's a journey that really has no destination. No, it has a destination that you learn more, but it doesn't end. So you can't think about assessment as, well, we, we, we assessed everything last week. Yeah. And now we don't have to assess anything else ever again. It's a, it's a, it should be really an ongoing thing. Um, and that it is worth thinking about, that it is a complex enough, important enough process that you want to spend some time reading some of the some of the articles maybe that are on this list. Are these extra? Um, I think this table got shorted. So. Um, and you know, actually paying attention to this and getting outside help with it because it's definitely worth it. This whole problem of how you begin something like this, choosing an initial focus, you could, you could go so many different directions. One of the things that comes up again and again in the literature is that whatever you do, your assessment needs to be tied to your larger institution's vision or mission statement, 
strategic plan as well as to your own. So that you're showing through your assessment activities that you're being accountable to the larger mission of the institution. You're tying the library to that really directly. So that's one thing to do, is to look back at those documents, revisit them, and what pops out at you. Well, oh, this, okay, so if I assess instruction, I can clearly show how we are contributing to student success that is stated in the mission. You can also look, unless you're, you know, at Jenny's um, library where there's only positive input, but you can look at the speakies <laughs> wheel. <laughs> where, what are your users saying? Oh, there aren't enough computers, and I think, Joan, you were talking about the computer usage issue. So maybe that is the thing that pops out at you as the place you want to start to get your feet wet with assessment. Um, I, I told you why we wanted to do the commons. It was new, it would seem to be really good, we wanted to evolve it, so we focused there. But you can also look at your budget to understand your investment. If you're paying a lot to for a service, uh, if you're spending a lot of time on it, that means you're paying a lot for it. Maybe that's a place you want to do. And in library instruction, can often be that service that is costly. Um, you know, some of you are having to do assessment on your own. You're either in a small library, or it's been written into a director's job that you are the one who does assessment. And I would make the plea that you change that in some way. That you bring others on board with you at whatever level, including thinking about getting help from other faculty on your campus who have an expertise you may not have, who have an interest in the library. Maybe they're the ones that use library instruction the most. Ask them to help you formulate an assessment plan. Not, you know, not to put all the work on them by any means, but to get their input and to get that sort of camaraderie that will help you keep a momentum. Taking some kind of inventory, whatever that means to you, of your assessment skills. What are some skills you need for this kind of job, for assessment? What do you think? Attention to detail. Attention to detail. Analytical. So Analytical skills. Organization. Being organized. Some computer skills. Knowing how to use Excel, let's say, maybe. Uh, knowing, yeah, Jenny? I think um, being able to look at it from the user's viewpoint, what do they want? Not what are we doing, but what do they need to want? So we can do that. Yes, okay. How statistical knowledge, statistical analysis, maybe that's what you were saying about the analysis. <laughs> and um, don't let the fact that you identify a hole stop you from starting this. Because, of course, we all work in education. We know how to learn things. We know where to go to learn things and how to get help. And so exploring resources and seeking advice from people who have who are either doing a good job at this that you perceive. Uh, and that can be, you know, emailing somebody or it can be writing reading the article. That, that brings me up. Yeah. We've done some surveys, but I would be interested in seeing surveys that other people have written so we know quite how to ask the questions and what questions to ask is some examples. And how would you go about getting those? I email everybody saying, what do you <laughs> You guys have a listserv, right? Right. So I foresee that, Jenny, you're going to put a message out there saying, is anybody surveying their students about how they're, you know, what they're learning? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. so we know that some of the surveys we've done after we get it back, we, see, we should have worded yeah. that question yeah. differently. Yeah. <laughs> right. People didn't understand what you meant. They gave you really bizarre answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is some of the stuff that I've already talked about. And um, please, please um, keep the bibliography. Yeah, like you've got to keep every sheet of paper you get. This is easy too. Um, I can also send it out. You have Mary Ann send it out on the listserv in electronic format, which would make it a lot easier for you to click on some of those darn long links that I have in there. Because I tell you, I was really amazed at some of the resources that are out there. And I've highlighted in yellow the ones that I've cited within this PowerPoint. But there were a lot that I read that I just simply didn't do a direct quote from. Um, and it just informed some of my thinking on it. 
you know, um, Steve Hiller's stuff, those are all PowerPoints that he has generously put up on the web. This is presentations he's done at various ALAs. And they've really got some really great questions. You will read them and you'll think, huh, why didn't I think of that? And it will help you determine what is meant by outcomes and assessment versus evaluation. Um, there are some uh, association resources. ACRL is, is really into assessment right now. And you'll see up at the top three links to some ACRL resources. Uh, one is the Immersion 13 program assessment demonstrating the educational value of the um, academic library. I've applied to attend that. I won't know until July, July sometime whether or not I'm good enough to go. <laughs> I had to apply for money from our provost to do that. Because assessment is such a big issue everywhere, the provost was pretty free with that one. You know, it was not that hard to get. So you might think about that, um, not just having to go out and find grant funding, but go into your library, to your university or campus college administration and say, I need to assess this, this is what I want to go to. If you identify a program, they're more likely to say, oh yeah, um, and there is a whole value of academic libraries initiative that ACRL is doing, and that website includes a very long report, which I don't have with me, um, that is full of detail about how you establish your value within your campus community, within whatever community you need to. So, this is a real mishmash of articles, websites, associations, and that sort of thing. I uh, hope that it is useful to you. Once you've done your initial assessment, of course, you don't want to stop there. And, uh, you know, it sounds funny, but you need to assess your assessment. And there is actually an article on my bibliography that is about assessing assessment. <laughs> and it sounds like, you know, a never-ending regression, but it's important to reflect on what you did to figure out if you would do it differently. Just like that little that example of the survey is absolutely right, only on a bigger scale. Every time I do something, I think, God, I should have done that in a different way. And a lot of times that slips out of my head. Well, this is saying you need to keep track of what you would do differently so you can implement it. How can you streamline it? A lot of times when we first do something, we make it much harder on ourselves. Understandably, we're, we're creating something from scratch. We don't know what the best way to do something is. So how are you going to streamline it? How will you make it easier? Who else should you involve? Maybe you created a, a group to uh, assess something and you realize at the end of the task, oh, I, God, I really needed that other person's perspective. Because every person you have in the room brings in a different perspective. That's why it's really good not to do assessment on your own. Um, the skills issue. How will you use what you've learned? That's a really interesting question that we haven't really talked about. So you go to all this work, you do more than just gather numbers, you tell a story. Where are you going to tell that story? Well, usually in the past you want those numbers to justify budget increases. So you tell the story to higher administration through your numbers. Um, when you apply for grants. Yeah, okay, so grant applications. Your website. Why not uh, have something on your website? User of the week. This person said this about the library. This person got this out of the library this week. There are lots of creative ways that you can use assessment um, outcomes. <clears throat> you just have to sit for a while and imagine what that's like. I don't think that's people who say this person got this out of the library. No, no, I know. I mean, what I meant is what they learned. No, okay. no this ain't check out. Plus, you, plus, you always have to figure out. Well, what kind of permission do I need to use somebody's story? Very good. And the dream of all dreams is that you create an assessment plan for your library that includes a lot more than just this initial assessment for it and, and a cycle. So how often are you going to assess library instruction? You're not going to do it every day, maybe. You're going to do it once a year at this time for a certain period of weeks, that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm almost done here. How do you recognize successful assessment? 
It should be participatory, culturally appropriate, ongoing, informative. You should be able to do it, not kill yourself doing it. It should be useful, meaningful, and relevant to the larger tribal community. So this is my charge for you. <laughs> it might be easier to do this just thinking about every new thing that we do. We're going to ask that question. Uh, how will we define success? This is the question that Gail brought up earlier. How will we define success in this project, service, or collection? If you create that as a step, you are going to remember to assess your project, your collection, your service at certain points. Grow your staff skills, draw others into your assessment plans. And don't forget that you are always going to need to refer back to those documents that govern the larger institution. You always want to be tied to that to show that you're accountable and that you're worthy of money, notice, celebration. You want to be stars. This kind of thing will make you that. That's kind of what we're trying to focus on now is assessing our instruction. And I'd like to just hear from anybody else what you're doing. Thank you. Well, I'll just say from our point of view, we're, <clears throat> we're starting into that. That's one of the reasons why I'm being, I've applied to go to the immersion, um, ACRL immersion program on assessment. Because we haven't been good at assessing. We've done here and there evaluations of courses, but we haven't assessed. Yeah. Um, uh, I, um, with Marianne and another person who's part of the composition team, are trying to create, uh, doing a little sort of outcome survey with all our writing 101 students to see if they do know where the catalog is and what the difference is between that and the databases. So we're having, we have some, we're experimenting with a sort of really brief survey of that. And that's where we are. I mean, we are not, we're not the assessment stars in the room. For instruction. We do do the, the what is it, the NAP form for every class on Canvas, including all the library tests. For the That's credit for courses. Course. For credit courses. For credit courses, but and, and I think for the most part, the more classes we teach, though, are non credit. And so on. Correct. Yeah. I just. Yeah, no, no, you're right. We, we, do yeah. do we do have that. We're better than thought. Yeah. One of the Categories of assessment that are, are very impactful are the ROI studies, the return on investment studies. There was one just released in Texas this spring. For every dollar you invest in a public library in the state of Texas, there's a return of $44 to the economy. And that sort of thing is, is something that you can tell legislators and others. So. For your public library, right. But, though, but that model can be extended yes, to absolutely. other settings. And some of us here are both public and academic. Anybody else have a great instruction assessment story? We're um, assessing bibliographies for classes we've taught. We've just started doing it. We've been doing it for about a year, and it's been hit and miss. And the type of classes we're getting bibliographies from are inconsistent. So in the fall, we're going to just focus on the entry-level English classes and getting those bibliographies. And we're assessing them for, are they a library resource or not? Um, if they're a website, do we think the website is reliable? Um, and so we're doing that uh, for students who have taken, the, taken a library class. And then we're surveying professors to try to get their opinions about the usefulness of the class. And they've been pretty honest with us for the last year. Their comments have actually been really helpful and have changed how we are delivering um, our library instruction, actually. That's really great if you can get them to be honest a lot of times they see us as a really vital service and they don't want to say anything that would discourage us from working with them in the future. That's kind of what we found when we were asking questions of our instructors, I think. So, but yeah, so that sounds like you're doing a couple of things to fit together. 
So there's some ideas, Tim. And I would say, you know, for instance, maybe you guys want to be an email contact to get what analysis, the sort of parameters of the analysis of the bibliographies. Because that is what I'm hearing people are trying to do most commonly, is to analyze businesses, to analyze what students are using in their papers. And one suggestion would be to get bibliographies from papers of students who did not have library instruction as well, mm -hmm. so that you can do a comparison. Who was that? Comments <laughs> I did I wasn't watching over there. I did. Okay. Valerie. Valerie. Okay. Right. okay, so Valerie being <laughs> Tim. Okay. Anything else anybody wants to say, Jenny? Just occurred to me. You know, the, when you talked about how doing the survey can get tiring and answering those questions, has anybody tried maybe asking just asking people one question when they come in or when they leave? And so person to person. Person to person, and just come one question for a week or a month or something, and just sort of record what they're saying. I wonder if they could be, you know. For classes there are, they call them the two minute mm -hmm. surveys, where you'll ask two or three questions at the beginning of the class, and the same two or three questions at the end of the class. <coughs> so and it only takes a couple minutes at either end to evaluate and assess what the students are working with. I think we have to end now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.